Do you know the story of the Cooks River? It is quite turbulent and a little bit confronting even. It's a story about us as well. The photo at the top shows its natural, original river mouth. The photo at the bottom shows its artificial, constructed river mouth. We are close to its source here. What's going on? What happened to this river? That's what we'll find out today. Hi, I'm Jan from sustainablebutterflies.com.au. We are on a mission to make Australian educational and care organizations sustainable, frugal and improve their footprint. The link to our website is in the description below. In this video, we will look at what happened to this river from upstream, then along the way downstream, where we will look at the concrete channel naturalization project. Then, we will talk about the Aboriginal history and we will visit a 4,500 years old memorial site. We will wrap up at the river mouth and a warning. The river mouth, like the rest of the body, had suffered a lot and has braces. But you might be asking, what's the point of exploring a stormwater drain? Are we the Ninja Turtles or what? And how can something like this become a river? Well, it hasn't always been like that. This concrete channelization of Sydney's waterways started in the late 19th century and continued through most of the 20th century. Why? To alleviate flooding, flush out pollutants and to allow for urban development. And while the Ninja Turtles were thriving, it destroyed the ecological values of Sydney's waterways. But that is slowly changing for the better, as we are going to discover. We are about halfway through and we will stop here for two reasons. Firstly, Sydney Water controls and maintains the upper half of this 23 km long waterway, from its source, near where we started, up to this bridge here. And this upper half is not classified as a river, but as a stormwater asset. That's why it's fenced off and without public access. Secondly, Sydney Water has a policy of naturalization of their assets. And five years ago, they remediated over one kilometer of steep concrete riverbanks and concrete canals around here. This riverbank restoration included the creation of endangered salt marsh, 100,000 native plants, more natural bank features with sandstone blocks on a gentler slope instead of the concrete drop, as well as pathways, seating, a picnic shelter and more. In terms of the flora, you can see the mix of riparian vegetation, such as rushes and sedges, as well as salt marsh species, because up to here it's still tidal. So, we are meeting nature halfway through. While this is not the natural, original riverbank, like what it would have been 200, 300 plus years ago, it's not the concrete drop either, and the drain becomes the river again. This video would not be possible without the Cooks River Alliance. They make sure that this river comes back to life. They have fantastic resources on their website. I use these resources. The link is in the description. Now is a good time to talk about the Aboriginal history, which goes back 20,000 years in this catchment. You can see the locations of Aboriginal sites on the picture showing the catchment before the arrival of Europeans, and it was quite busy here. The second picture shows the catchment in the early decades of the colony, indicating fewer and more dispersed sites. It was a time of fear and conflict. The third picture shows the catchment from the 1820s to the 1870s, and this period marked a relative collaboration between the Aboriginals and the settlers, who employed them and used their skills and knowledge of the landscape. The fourth picture shows the catchment from the 1880s to the 1930s, with only one site, and that's because of pollution, racial segregation and urban development. And the final picture shows this heavily urbanized catchment now. This memorial was built to commemorate a 4,500 years old shell midden, which was found here at Kendrick Park at Tempe. The riverbank is just that. Midden is an occupation site where Aboriginal people left the remains of their meals. Other artifacts such as stone points, stone weapons or shellfish hooks were also found here and on other sites within the Cooks River catchment. Finally, we are at the river mouth, at the end of this 23 km long drain slash river. The river used to snake its way to Botany Bay, 
but then it had to be diverted to make way for the airport, which is kind of symbolic, don't you think? Because we just spoke about the Aboriginal history. Captain Cook arrived across Botany Bay over there 232 years ago. This point is the end of the Cooks River, which ends here through this artificial river mouth with braces, because of the airport over there, which has allowed millions of arrivals, me included. So this area, this point, marks arrivals, beginnings, as well as the end of the river, with plenty of manipulation and even elimination of nature along the way. The question is, what kind of braces are we using now and moving forward? I hope you enjoyed the video today and thanks for watching. We are sustainablebutterflies.com.au and who are we doing this for? For the environment, future generations, plants, animals, including butterflies. Have a great day.